Appearing to wield the ferocious tails of scorpions, these insects raid spider webs to steal their hard-earned prey. These are scorpion flies. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. So today, we're talking about the order Mycoptera, also referred to as the scorpion flies. This order is named for the large scorpion-like tail extending from its posterior. However, only some groups within this order possess this tail, and furthermore, you'll only find them on the males. This is because the tail is actually a male reproductive organ, so you don't need to worry about being stung by one. So if the tail isn't always a reliable way to distinguish mycopterans, then what do we do? Well, if you can get a good look at the face, you'll notice that mycopterans have their chewing mouth parts at the end of a long, extended snout. They also have prominent thread-like antennae and four narrow, often patterned wings of similar sizes. Well, most of the time, at least. The name Mycoptera actually refers to these long wings. Myco means long in ancient Greek, and terra means wing. So Mycoptera means long-winged. So now that you have an idea of the distinguishing characteristics of scorpion flies, do you think you can guess the closest living relative of the mycopterans? If you guessed fleas for some reason, you'd be correct. Yeah, I didn't get it at first either. I mean, you can sort of see the resemblance if you look at the Boreidae or the snow scorpion flies. And these mycopterans actually jump too, giving them their other name, snow fleas. The mycopterans are holometabolous, meaning they have a four-stage complete metamorphosis from egg to larvae to pupae to adult. The eggs are laid in soil or other moist environments to prevent desiccation or drying out. They often will take only a few days to hatch, but if the environment is too dry, they can wait months for moisture levels to return before exiting the safety of their egg. Once the caterpillar-like larvae hatches, it begins feeding on basically anything it can find. Mycopteran larvae are primarily scavengers, feeding on dead insects, decaying vegetation, or other organic matter. Like caterpillars, scorpionfly larvae have sclerotized head cases, three pairs of true legs attached to the thorax, and a series of squishy abdominal prolegs following in suit. However, unlike other insect larvae, which have small, simple eyes, mycopteran larvae have compound eyes, a larval trait unique to the mycoptera. After three or so months of growth, scorpion flies will pupate in the soil for another few months. Oftentimes, scorpion flies will wait out the winter in their pupal stage and then emerge as adults in the spring. Scorpion flies don't spin a cocoon or anything. They have what's called exorate pupae, where their appendages are not fused to their body during their pupal stage. This is as opposed to obtect pupae, which is, well, the opposite. Like the larvae, the adults aren't very picky with their food. They love dead insects, and they'll even go so far as stealing them straight from spider webs. They'll also feed on decaying plant matter, pollen, nectar, or even soak up the juices from dead animal carcasses. Other mycopterans, like the hanging flies, are predators, waiting to ambush prey that wanders too near by grabbing them with their long, curled legs. With full bellies, the scorpion flies are eager to pass on their genes. The males will release pheromones to attract in females, but that alone is not enough to earn a mate. Mycopterans often require nuptial gifts, the male will present a prey item or some nutritious secretion to the female. If it's to her liking, she'll stick around and let him mate. The larger the gift, the longer it takes for the female to eat, and the more time the male has to ensure his progeny. Creating eggs is taxing, so the nuptial gift provides additional energy to aid in egg production. The female deposits these eggs in a nice damp environment, and the cycle continues. Scorpion flies do not sting, bite, feed on our crops, or transmit any diseases. Some may look a little scary, and that's about it. They can be beneficial by feeding on pests, 
cleaning up dead organic matter, aerating the soil, or even pollinating. They aren't the poster child for any of these categories, they're more of a jack of all trades. However, mecopterans do help humans in another way. They can take the stand as criminal witnesses. As stated, mecopterans can be found feeding on carcasses, including humans. However, they'll only visit bodies a couple days old or less. So if you do find scorpion flies on a cadaver, it's likely pretty fresh. Important information for an investigation. Using insects to piece together the details of a corpse is called forensic entomology, and scorpion flies are one of many groups used to aid in this insect investigation. Scorpion flies rely on the health of the soil to prosper. If the soil is chemically contaminated or under intense use, scorpion fly numbers will suffer. To aid mycopterans, try to limit your chemical usage and minimize soil disturbance when possible. Also, the planting of native trees or other plants can help stabilize and aerate the soil, creating a healthy soil ecosystem that I'm sure the scorpion flies will be grateful for. Scorpion flies are not a particularly large group, so if you come across one, take a moment to appreciate the unique forms and behaviors that make up the order Mycoptera. Thank you all so much for listening, and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date with future content. And if you have any favorite species from this group, or just any fun scorpion fly facts I didn't cover, please leave them in the comments below, I'd love to hear about them. Peace y'all.